Lockdown Theater has returned. Oh, that's for my, that's for my next uh, tit for tat. Already reviewed that one. Oh, what's this? Oh, shit. Yeah, damn. That's blurry as hell. But you can read it. Let's do this shit. riding boy yeah I think this was the last of the black exploitation movies which started back in the early 70s kind of died out by the mid to late 70s and now by 82 yeah it's just pretty much non-existent so this movie was way way uh way too late <laughs> way too late you know what you know what kind of movie you're in for when it starts out with a damn Star Wars uh, crawl explaining what the fuck this movie is about this is penitentiary it's not a complex fucking story. Well, neither is Star Wars, but Star Wars had a lot of shit going on. This is the Adventures of Too Sweet. Yo, look here, rest in peace to Jama Fanaka, man, but that dude had a weird, bizarre style of filmmaking. Okay, you got the three penitentiary movies, and I think he's got a movie called uh, Welcome Home Nigga Charlie or some shit like that. And uh, especially that Penitentiary 3, Jesus. If I can ever find that one, I think it's on YouTube, I might just review that one. That was, that was really bizarre. This one here is just like... Yo, Jama Fanaka just said, fuck it. Bigger budget. <laughs> let me just let me just go batshit crazy. The great Leon Isaac Kennedy, who I thought had a strong resemblance to Sugar Ray Leonard at the time. Yeah, I, I forgot Mr. T was in this. Clubber Lang. This is uh this is pre-Clubber Lang, though. I'm pretty sure after he did Rocky, uh Jama Fanaka wouldn't have been able to afford him because Rocky like fucking catapulted Mr. T. And it's funny, in this movie, he plays himself. He's Mr. T. And some more trivia, Stallone actually uh, recommended him to uh, Jama Fanaka, the writer and director. He said, hey, he said, hey, yo, you want somebody big and strong to be in your movie? Hey, go with Mr. T. That guy could really hit, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's trivia. Mr. T got the role in this movie. So the brother that was in the first penitentiary that played Half Dead, I forgot his name, but I've seen him in some other stuff before. But they replaced him with uh, Ernie Hudson here, Winston Zedmore, playing a low down, filthy scum dog, half dead, Two Sweets arch nemesis. That's so crazy. He did Ghostbusters two years after this. <laughs> it was clubber. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's where Booker T got that from. That's Booker T's famous line. Sucker, can you dig it? Of the rematch, Half Dead vs. Too Sweet. Just the rematch, boy. See, Ice Cube, take note of this, man. We should have got that rematch with Craig and Debo. You cheated us in next Friday. All right, this is another recast here. So the guy that played Seldom Seen here, this is a different actor from the first movie. Now this dude, this cat here, I forgot his name, but he was from, he was the, the bad guy, he was the villain of Black Belt Jones. Personally, I prefer the original Seldom scene. You know, he was, he was like, he was like a black Mr. Miyagi, you know what I'm saying? He was real small, had that, had that whisper in his talk, he talked with a lisp. I mean it too sweet. <laughs> I just love the way he say too sweet, you know. If I can't have it all, I don't want none of it. And I'm real too sweet. <laughs> it is some bad acting alright so all right, so let me get this straight so Too Sweet doesn't want to box no more because he ain't no boxer but his girlfriend gets violated and killed and this, this motivates him to box again because he wants to become champ of the world for her and show the kids that you could be something am I tripping or does that shit not make sense <laughs> So Mr. T's a trainer in this one, but most times if you're a trainer, that means you're not fighting no more. Mr. T is still like, you know, his prime. Also known as lift every voice and sing. If y'all don't like it, eat a dick.
Play ball! <laughs> Fuck y'all, I don't like it. Oh, look who it is. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I forgot he was at this. Rudy Ray Moore. Pee Wee Store himself, the Disco Godfather, Dolomite is my name, and fuck it up, motherfuckers, is my game. Damn, he's got that Floyd Mayweather style. Whoop, did I say that out loud? <laughs> this almost makes no sense, because like I said, Too Sweet fought this nigga in the first movie and whooped his ass. He fights him again in this one, Jesse beats him. So now, like Rocky, he's got to come back and fight him again. But this fight, is this, this has no... You know what's going to happen. I mean, but even though in a situa situation like this, you know what's going to happen, but still, it doesn't have no emotional impact. It's like, he already beat this nigga. All right, y'all know how YouTube is, so I really can't react to this shit like I want to. So I, I don't even like doing reactions, but uh, something like this you got to react to. All right. Now it's time for the Rashad G review treatment for Penitentiary 2. This is a horrible movie. But this is a guilty pleasure for me, where it's horrible, but damn it, I love watching this. I love watching this, especially when I'm drinking. Now, today is not my drinking day. My my drinking day is not till tomorrow. <clears throat> I should have started a day early, but usually when I'm when I'm sipping some tequila and watching this, this is the most entertaining thing in the world to me. And at the end of the day, movies are supposed to be entertaining. They're, they're meant to entertain us. Terrible story, bad acting, the motivation, the box does not make sense. And not to mention, it's called Penitentiary 2. Alright, the whole point about the first Penitentiary was Too Sweet got locked up for a crime he didn't commit, and he's in there with a bunch of bunch of you know alpha males that you know break in the new meat that comes in there. And Too Sweet being a light-skinned pretty brother like himself, he was a perfect target, and he had to fight for his manhood, fight for his life, and fight for survival. You know what I mean? So the first penitentiary was a survival story, and even though that one was very bizarre too and kind of weird, but it was still, it, it made sense and it was a good watch. It was a movie that you somewhat took seriously. Somewhat. It's still exploitation, kind of, but you sort of took it seriously. Now, Penitentiary 2 has nothing to do with the penitentiary. Nothing. And, and dig this shit, I couldn't show this, but dig this shit. So, he loses the Big Jesse, right, the first time, after whooping him in the first movie, but he loses the Big Jesse this time, right? And the only way he'll fight him again is he says we have to go to his turf. We go back to the penitentiary and you have a deal. What sense does that make? All right. Any, any penitentiary two enthusiast, school me. What's the point of going back to the damn penitentiary? Look, I've never been in jail before. Don't plan on going to jail no time soon. Ever, never, 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 never. But if I've been to the pen and I come out, I ain't taking my black ass back. Now, even if it's to box somebody, I ain't going back to that motherfucker. So, what's he tomorrow going back to the penitentiary to fight Big Jesse? You a professional fighter. Get in a professional ring. It, it just, it didn't make sense to me. And it was weird having Mr. T as his trainer because Mr. T is in phenomenal shape. And he could be the number one contender. But instead, he decides to train too sweet. And seldom seen, who like I said in the first movie, was like a black Mr. Miyagi. And this time, he's played by a totally different actor. And has a totally different vibe to him. So, it doesn't even seem like seldom seen. But the standout definitely is Ernie Hudson as Half Dead. I think Half Dead really steals this movie, and I guess that's probably the reason he got cast in Ghostbusters, because he he did a great job, and he had a real weird scene also. I, I, I'm, I'm probably going to use the word weird a lot in this video, because this movie's very weird. But there's a scene with him and his girlfriend, where they're watching the first two sweet uh, Big Jesse fight, right? And uh, they're eating some, they're eating a fried chicken meal. And the girlfriend says something to him. And by the way, she looks like a like a shaved cat. And he slaps her. And they get into this fight. And next thing you know, he takes uh, some potato salad and just mushes it in her face. And next thing you know, they're taking potato salad and rubbing it on each other. And you hear that mayonnaise and potato and shit. You know that. And he's sucking it off her fingers. It was just a bizarre fucking scene. Like, ugh. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jama Fanaka had a weird style, man, <laughs> he did. But there's so much you can say is wrong with this movie, but when certain movies have a charm to them, you just can't help but to love them. And Penitentiary 2 is one of those movies that I love. I definitely don't like it as much as the first movie, but I can't watch I can't watch these two together, you know what I'm saying? I guess kind of similar to Karate Kid, Karate Kid 2. 
you know, penitentiary, penitentiary too. Um, yeah, Leon Isaac Kennedy is too sweet. My man tried to be too smooth, you know what I'm saying? And he he was trying to, I guess, show his acting chops, which is kind of laughable. Like I said, he always looked like a broke Sugar Ray Leonard. But uh, yeah, Leon Isaac Kennedy, he'll, he'll forever be too sweet. I think he's a pastor now or something like that, but he'll forever be associated with that character. And um, trivia, there's a movie that he did prior to this called Body and Soul, which is also a boxing film, and he plays Leon the Lover. So he plays too sweet, but with the with the smooth meter all the way up, and his wife is in it with him too, uh, Jane Kennedy, who back in the day, she was finer than frog hair, sweeter than bear meat. So I'm gonna have to review that one too, Body and Soul. That, that's a very uh, little talked about movie. This was between the first penitentiary and, and this one. Wrapping it up, man, I, I, I really dug this movie, you know, uh, if, if I'm putting on like a film critic hat, like if I'm getting my Siskel and Ebert on, this shit would get thumbs down, probably a D minus, damn near F, but just for me personally, because of my affection for this film, even as bad as it is, I could, I, matter of fact, I could watch this over movies that are considered to be great, you know what I mean, that even I would say that was a great fucking movie, but some films ain't got that rewatchability, and this movie has a ton of rewatchability. I watch this a few times a year, especially when I'm toe up. I got nothing but love for this movie, man. So yeah, Penitentiary 2, to me, uh, gets a B plus, man. I can't give it an A. You know, I, I think I'd give the first, did I give the first Penitentiary an A? Shit, I gotta go back and watch that. Well, you know what, it, whatever I gave, whatever I gave the first Penitentiary, I have to go back and watch my review, whatever I gave my, the first Penitentiary movie, this one is a grade below that. All right, but off the top of my head, this one here gets like a B must, a B must, how I sound, a B plus. All right, so have you guys seen Penitentiary 2? What do you think about the adventures of Too Sweet? Uh, do you want to see me review Penitentiary 3? Because I think it's on YouTube. Then um, I might review it anyway. Fuck it, even if y'all don't want to see it. Hell, I talk what I want to talk about on my channel. You know, leave me alone. So yeah, y'all, what y'all think about the movie? Uh, if you like and dig the content, hit that like and subscribe and notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord.